Welcome to study session 15, Determination and Estimation of Shadow Price. Introduction Since it has been established that market price differs from shadow price, it becomes important to discuss ways of estimating the shadow price from the market price. Several ways of separating them have been identified. The ways include the general equilibrium approach, linear programming approach, determination through adjustment of market prices, the little and mailless approach, and simple elimination of distortion. Estimated shadow price can be useful in a number of ways. Determination of shadow prices. Shadow prices can be determined and estimated through different methods. We have the general equilibrium approach, linear programming approach, determination through adjustment of market prices, and the little and mailless approach. The determination of shadow prices through the above methods have been difficult. However, most authors rely on the simple methods of making adjustment to the market prices by eliminating distortions noticeable in them. Let us consider some of these methods such as general and partial equilibrium approach, eliminating of distortion method and the little and mailless approach of shadow price determination. General and partial equilibrium approach. The determination of shadow prices through this approach requires that equilibrium be established in the market for all factors of production by taking their demand and supply, equating the total demand to the total supply in this market gives a shadow price which is an equilibrium price. The determination of shadow price through the general equilibrium is difficult because the existence of full equilibrium situation for the entire economy is not realistic. This is because in order to find out the equilibrium prices, the knowledge of total demand and supply curves and consumption underlying them is essential. Thus, we can use the partial equilibrium approach, which is simpler. Under the partial equilibrium approach, Equilibrium between the demand and supply for each factor of production will be established and the shadow price determined. Thus, we can determine the shadow price for capital, labor, exchange rate separately. Determination of shadow price through adjustment of market prices. Shadow prices can be estimated by making adjustments to the market prices. This is the traditional approach to estimating shadow prices. It involves elimination of the effects of indirect taxes and subsidies from the market prices of goods and service and also the calculation of the opportunity cost of factors such as labor, capital and foreign exchange rate. When imperfections and distortions are eliminated from the market prices, it becomes a shadow price. Little and Merlis approach. The determination of shadow price by valuing all domestic inputs and outputs at world prices is suggested by Little and Merlis. They argue that international prices give a better measure of real costs and benefits than domestic prices which contain the effects of all types of distortions that need adjustment. This method provided a way of making domestic and foreign resources comparable. Goods and services are classified into two broad categories, the traded goods and non-traded goods. Traded good is one in which some of the demand for the commodity will be satisfied from imports or some of the supply exporter. A good is regarded as exportable even if it is used in some other domestic industry, provided that it has the effect of increasing export, had it not been used 
in domestic industry. Goods and services that do not fall into the above categories are not traded goods. This approach is justifiable for economic development reasons. Difficulties encountered in the determination of shadow price 1. Inadequate data The determination of shadow prices requires availability of data, but usually adequate data are easily not available particularly in the developing nations. 2. Existence of fundamental disequilibrium The establishment of intrinsic value of factor production requires the existence of full equilibrium in all markets which is not easily available in LDCs. 3. Difficulties in estimation of marginal productivity Shadow price represents the value of marginal productivity. First, the calculation of shadow price requires the estimation of marginal productivity or the marginal cost which is not easy. Hence, it is always difficult to determine shadow price. 4. Government regulation. The government often regulates prices of certain public goods and services. Examples are electricity, transport, postage, telephone, radio, and so on. Since the market forces of demand and supply do not fix the prices, they make the determination of shadow price to be difficult. 5. The determination of shadow price is difficult in the case of projects with high capital intensive and for goods which are substitute or complementary to each other. Suppose there are two projects in which the input of one is the output of the other and vice versa. The determination of accounting prices for the inputs of labor, capital and foreign exchange will be very difficult if not impossible. 6. The determination of shadow prices involves huge computations. This computation is made tedious by heterogeneous factors of production. This means that shadow prices is needed to be calculated for each factor. 7. There is an administrative problem involved in the implementation of shadow prices. Assuming shadow prices are calculated, there will be no problems of making them acceptable to the private sector which may be responsible for implementing the public projects. The materials needed for the execution of the project are acquired through market prices. In addition, there is also the lack of data for its computation. Criticisms of Shadow Pricing Marking criticized the use of shadow prices as hinging on the value and of extra information. It declares, there are many things wrong with observed market prices to make one's hair stand on end. Most of the time, they are defective representations of the appropriate substitution ration. The only good thing one can say about market prices is that they are usually better than the alternatives, that is, prices that are observed rather than derived. The reason is that one, market provides an enormous amount of information at a relatively low cost even though the information is still short of being perfect. This information has some relevance as long as one's preference functions gives some weight to the desirability of having voluntary change. 2. Market put out millions of persons into the business of providing information about possible substitution in the market. 3. Market induces millions of people to adjust their purchases or sales in response to price changes so that price reflects approximately what an extra unit would be worth to all users. Because of market imperfections, there are no doubt that share is more appropriate exchange ratios in principles, but in most cases, it will be extremely expensive to acquire the improved information.
the existence of defection in market prices does not mean that some derived price or alternative procedure would automatically be better. Shadow prices have been criticized upon the theory of second best, while the first best rule suggests that the benefit should be valued at prices which reflect marginal cost, the second best theorem suggests that correct pricing rule should value benefit effects. This rule will be relevant to public projects which are designed to fulfill the welfare of the people as a whole in the direction of a Pareto social optimum. However, since shadow prices are more relevant to public sector, there is no guarantee that the second best theory of marginal social cost will move the economy into social optimality. This criticism has been rebuilt on the basis of two counter arguments. A. The theory of second best is applicable to situations which the degree of interdependence among the sectors of the economy is very high. But in LDCs, this condition is not fulfilled. Only a very few sectors are interdependent and so only a few shadow prices needed to be derived. For example, shadow exchange rate, shadow prices for non-traded goods such as electricity and transport. B. The degree of accuracy desired in the calculation of shadow prices depends on the purpose for which the results are intended to fulfill. The purpose of shadow pricing in LDCs is to make possible decentralization of investment appraisal and to centralize investment decisions. In LDCs, a great deal of decentralization is desirable or unavoidable. There is therefore the problem of ensuring that the separable assessment and decisions based on them are consistent with one another. Shadow prices have been seen to be very useful in planning. It provides the rough estimates of the scarce resources. Hence, project appraisal based on shadow prices has more chances of success. It has gone a long way in curbing the practices of abandoning projects in the middle of implementation in LDCs. Uses of shadow prices Despite the difficulties shadow prices possess and the criticism raised against it, shadow prices are quite useful for 1. Project Analysis Valuation The use of market prices for valuation of cost and benefit is not a perfect and correct method because it leads to wrong estimation. Shadow price is a convenient tool for analyzing and evaluating investment projects. A factor that is expected to be in short supply should have accounting price higher than its market price while one that is in surplus should have its evaluation cost and benefit lower than its market prices. It is also useful for evaluating the effect of a project on national income. This is often done on the basis of profitability criterion or cost-benefit analysis where both costs and benefits are calculated at the accounting prices. Furthermore, shadow prices provide a rough guide for emergency cases. Two. Public policy. The success of development plans and projects depends upon the correct operation of public policy. The success of public policy also requires the use of shadow prices which are intrinsic prices. In fact, the public sector cannot be developed unless the prices of labor, capital and foreign exchange and other inputs are determined in accordance with shadow prices. Though often shadow prices are rough estimates, yet they are useful for public policy. Therefore, the state should make effort to bring the market prices close to shadow prices through fiscal, monetary and other measures for the successful implementation or development plans.
decision making of the firm the shadow price of the resources can be compared with their market prices and help the entrepreneur decide whether it is profitable to hire additional units of these factors the shadow price of a factor denotes by how much of profit of the firm will be increased if the firm employs additional units of labor its profit will increase by i monetary unit similarly if the firm employed an additional unit of capital its profit would rise by two monetary units but in order to hire additional units of i and l or k the firm would have to pay their market price that is wage or rent of capital thus if the shadow prices of a factor is larger than its market price it will pay the firm to increase its employment of that factor and since the firm's net profits will increase obviously the shadow prices whose values are estimated from the linear program technique are of great practical importance to the firm this is the end of echo 405 thank you